Hello, everyone. We're on our show, Spiritual States, and today we're going to talk about the lust or thirst for power. Hello, Dr. Lightman. Hello. Since ancient times, especially in ancient Greece, uh, people saw that the lust for power really distorts a person's psyche. When a person is in a position of power for a long time, it does something to a person. The Greek told it, the Greeks called it uh, uh, the sin of pride, a mortal sin, the lust for power. How does Kabbalah look at this? Well, the lust for power, we can say that it is the main thing in a person who wishes to govern that which is around him. Look at how a child grabs, holds, pulls to himself, puts in his mouth. It's all the, the desire for power. It's our main essence, everything that I feel, everything that I see, that it will all be under my power within my ability to somehow attain it all, bring it closer to me, conquer it, cleave it to myself, etc. Meaning the lust for power is actually necessary for our existence. If we won't want something, then we will not be able to, to breathe, to take in the food, etc. Meaning, the lust for power starts with very elementary actions and ends where a person already loses judgment, maybe due to his desire to control everything, hold it as under his power, and not knowing what to do with himself in order not to miss out on anything. It starts with something natural. It starts with something natural, but it could shift into something monstrous. Well, today, biologists and other scientists say that uh, about what happens when a person holds to a high position, high post for an extended period of time. There's narcissism. There is, um, they become intolerant. They're, they, of course, feel almighty. Well, of course, they can't be judged for their deeds. They don't listen to advice. And completely, their, um, their perception of re reality is distorted. And all this brings to incompetence, the inability to feel the situation a person's in. If you can explain the inner mechanism, what happens to a person that is under such power, that has such power? We're in a world where there are two forces, the force of attraction and the force of rejection. It's on the physical level, on the moral level. We're drawn to each other emotionally. We're, we're uh, pushed away from one another. In this way, we come closer in the physical world or between us in some way in the spiritual world and distance and certain sensations internal ones, meaning the lust to feel another, the desire to feel another on the same level with you, beneath you, under you, further away, closer, and all these different directions exists in us naturally. The entire question is, how is a person brought up? How is he raised? And how does he start understanding his nature and feeling how can he control it in order to achieve certain qualities in life, certain goals in life? So it's not enough how we are. 
It's how will we act in order to realize our abilities, in order to come closer or move further away to certain desirable or undesirable, let's call them, sources. There's the paradox of power, that once we acquire power, we lose certain abilities that we needed in order to acquire the power itself. Uh, people were, that were empathetic become, uh, you know, cold, um, um, become insensitive, contemptuous. Professionals become incompetent. Honest people become thieves, um, etc., etc. I know that in ancient Rome, Greece, they were changed every year or two or even less. Uh, in ancient Israel, how was it, if you know? Were there certain limita- limitations? In ancient Israel, it constantly, constantly changed, meaning a person can't be in power if he does not constantly prove to everyone else that he correctly used his power and that he is morally, intellectually higher than others. Meaning that's his work. It, it consisted of constantly demonstrating these abilities. Uh, but King David, he ruled for so many years. For so many years, he need to. He needed to teach. He needed to be a judge. He needed to give orders and realize and um, you know explain them to the to one hundred and twenty wise people that weren't subordinated to him, but that they voted freely against or in favor. So everything was very non-simple. That's how it was built. Also, of course, there were different... Well, maybe states that don't seem ideal to us that are also written about in history. Meaning there was the limitation of power. Limitation in years and in different directions, yeah. Is control over other people the greatest pleasure? Well, actually, a person has nothing higher in his ego. Once you said that respect is... The sense of, uh, the sensation of control. Well, maybe respect is higher than power, but respect is something that you get from others, but what you sense, feel from yourself where you're, where you have power over others, that's the highest egoistic state. Psychologists say that uh, people that um, are intoxicated with power, they um, it, it really changes them, um, changes their psyche. Even do you agree with it? The thing, yes, I agree. The thing is that we need to control ourselves between two forces, reception and bestowal. Um, there needs to all the time be some kind of balance between the two forces of nature. All of nature consists of two opposite forces, of reception and giving and bestowal. So, whatever way they're expressed in, they need to be balanced. And then, in that state of balance, we need to achieve the right results. And the one force is necessary, and so is the other. There's no darkness without light, no light without darkness, meaning everywhere, everywhere, we need to choose the happy middle. If a person loses the ability to hold on to this happy middle, then, you know, if, if he's let to do whatever he feels like unlimitedly, then of course he'll become distorted and won't grow up correctly. He needs to feel in a framework, feeling that he is allowed to act within a limited area, restricted area between these two forces. 
so it's always necessary to keep a person within boundaries. Of course, it's like an animal. You can't allow it to do whatever it feels like. Either it's limited by external forces. Suppose an animal has no problem. It constantly understands what it needs. It won't eat too much, drink too much, sleep too much, etc., etc. It does whatever its organism demands, and the organism on the animal level demands the most rational things, the minimum necessary rational. And a person doesn't have that. Uh, What differs a person from an animal is that a person all the time follows his ego. So how does it coincide with what Bala Sulam writes that you need to give people their own freedom, their own freedom in that we don't force a person, but we teach him, and to the measure to which we teach him, he gets the freedom of how to correctly limit himself, how to put him himself in the framework and make a human being out of himself. So freedom means that he himself understands himself, he understands how he needs to bring himself up, educate himself. Yeah, but, you know, liberal systems, that's freedom. No, no, to the contrary, to be above yourself and from there to control your animate part. Your animal. But power over other people. How does that influence a person's psyche? Suddenly he reaches a power position even in some office. What happens to a person's psyche? A person needs to get such education that he needs to feel beneath others and not above them. In order to make an effort to, and he needs to make an effort to pull himself under others, to make them higher, to feel that he still needs to add something in order to equal them, to be their equal, that he is worse than others. This way he has the ability to grow and when he has that ability, and he feels these different shortcomings in himself, he feels his ability to grow and rule. If a person person doesn't work that way, he won't be able to rule or correctly orient himself in this world. So your advice is to raise a leader in a way that gives him the ability to see others greater than himself. A leader needs to see that others are greater, better than him. But he looks at the people, he sees that he's smarter. That's exactly it, that he sees that others are greater than himself and he feels that he needs to still grow in order to equalize them. And when he studies himself and the abilities that he has in order to rise above himself, then he understands also what can he teach others? So in this way, a person, under this condition, a person can govern others, rule others. Yes, precisely when he feels lower than them. Because the thing is that the feeling that I'm inferior to others is, is, is actually a very exalted sensation. It is a sensation of how to speak in that I am higher than others, better than others. I'm unique in that, in that I feel myself lower than others. Yeah, but what can cause such a sensation in a person? Education. It is against our nature. Self-education. Self-education? Yeah. It's when he's engaged in the wisdom of Kabbalah and he sees from the realization, implementation of this science on himself, how lowly he really is. Well, where when a person attains the upper, higher ruling force, 
That's how it's revealed in him, that he feels that he is little, petty, etc. Compared to that upper force, but in relation to others, in relation to others too, the rest of the world. Who is he? If he correctly attains the upper force, then he sees its revelation in everything around him and feels himself in relation to others, small, weak, undeveloped. But in relation to that force, I understand, but in relation to other people, how come? Because he sees the revelation of the Creator and all people around him starting to really feel himself not smart enough, not developed enough, not kind enough, not able to see far ahead, far enough ahead. Okay, so obviously then, if that's how he sees other people, then he sees himself inferior to others. And he's happy about it. He's happy about it. And therefore, Anyone who is higher than others, he actually feels himself inferior to others. That's interesting. So, without revealing the upper force, a person can't... No, no, we'll be terrible animals unless we reveal the upper force. That's what we see. Okay. Um. Psychologists say that our sense of well, our sense of power allows us to better make decisions, etc. No, I think that psychologists uh, maybe they were not clearly understood. The higher a person is in his scientific attainments the more doubts he has, the more questions he has. He has many different understandings, perceptions that he can't tie them together. He is... He is... He doesn't... He doesn't trust himself. If he fully does, then he's not a real scientist. Uh, People with power, they uh, judge others, but don't judge themselves for the same deeds. Right. Power destroys any logical things in us. Uh, Power is suppression. Power is power. If I reign over someone or something than that person or that quality or that something doesn't have free choice, free will, free thoughts. Um, If he needs to subordinate to me, then I can't ask his advice anymore. He can't be in doubt because he's subordinated. Those that feel that their fate is in their hands, and he has no other way out. No, I mean, a person who fears God, will he not be able to nonetheless somehow more or better control his own nature, his lust for power, taking into consideration that he believes in some upper force that controls everything? Not that he senses it, but believes in it. Can it help? No, because faith or belief is not knowledge. We see that it is all gradually dissipating along with our development. It's dissipating from society and there's no place for faith. So without clear attainment and all your sensations, a person will not be able to deal cope with his nature, control his egoistic nature and lust for power without a clear sensation of the upper force, just believing in it. Gradually a person will come to that, that he needs contact with the upper force, that without that he doesn't understand how to exist. Who do you think is more dangerous, a man or a woman that have unlimited power? Man. A woman has many instincts, natural instincts, that force her to 
act wisely, correctly, in accordance with nature. A woman is very limited according to her nature and her behavior, physiologically, conscious, uh, intellectually. It's not, it's not um, any kind of limitation. It's a limitation in terms of that he is, uh, that she is and within certain boundaries, exists within certain boundaries. A man doesn't, and therefore he can do more harm. Is it possible to use power in a positive direction? Can man do that? Only if he's corrected in his intentions and he understands that the main thing about him is to do good. Does the Creator have such an aspiration um, for power? He controls Creator. Uh, the creation. He has no such question. It's simply a force, a force that governs everything and includes everything in it. And he has no aspiration. No aspiration because there's no such uh, option of aspiring for power because he himself is the power, the governance. And uh, what about us? We don't have that. What the Creator created is as if He moved aside and created an empty space where He does not reveal Himself. Actually, He exists in it, but He doesn't reveal Himself. And in that space, we exist. Today, in the era of neoliberalism, the government, the government, the power of government over a person is decreasing. Is it good or bad? I don't think that it's decreasing. I don't think that the government is giving up any of its power or control. Well, a person feels more free than a few hundreds of years ago. Well, it's only because man invents new mechanical toys, machines, means that give them the illusion of freedom, but that's it. Is he free? Today I depend on everyone. Anyone can get to know who am I, what am I, where is this freedom? Well, look, if you look at a few hundreds of years back, any ruler could do anything he feels like to any individual without being punished. They don't have that, in democratic countries at least. What does it tell us, actually? It doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't tell us anything. It says that the freedom that we had previously, today, shifted into a different form. But it doesn't mean that we're free. It's like, you know, that you allow your child, little child, to run around the grass. And he thinks that he's free, but you're watching over him. So nature didn't change, only the power took on different forms. Yes, and on harsher forms, very res- restricted ones, you're being followed and seen through. Two leaders need to have power for uh, do, need, do leaders need to have the lust for power? We already talked about it. In name of what is that power? What is it meant for? If I want to raise my children correctly, I wish to reign over them, but it's to their benefit and within the boundaries that nature allows me to. And anything else is... Uh, it's a bad kind of control power that needn't be. People with explicit inclinations toward power, are they closer to spiritual correction and development? Because by the pyramid of desires, they should be closer to correction, more developed. Possibly they're closer to the recognition of evil, But that, of course, depends on the circumstances. Power isn't just one person. 
or that is under the control of the Creator. We're not talking about Him. We're talking about a person who exists in society, and we can't talk about Him separately from society. So here we'll have to divide it into man, society, the Creator, and how, nonetheless, does the Creator govern us through society. Aspiration for power. Is it an innate quality or an acquired one? It's an innate one. Meaning you're born a dictator or do you become one? No, you're born a dictator. It's impossible to educate a dictator. Impossible. I thought society educates a person. No, society only sets the conditions. In the future, how do you see the desire for power showing itself? I hope that we'll be able to show people that power needs to be good with care and concern like a mother toward her child, that this is the kind of way that this is the kind of power that society should have over an individual. And that's it. Are there certain mechanisms by which you can uh, battle um, the, the way power rules a person? Constant education for many, many years and even generations, but only in such a way will we be able to rise above our egoistic essence and to start governing through love. But it's a lengthy process education. We don't have anything else. So for a leader, now he feels an aspiration for power. What does he do? We condition um, these kinds of elections, electing someone who's running for power only according to this criteria of love, care, concern. What does he exactly want to do? How does he wish to fill those subordinated to him with his love? Well, they have an entire list of it. No, no, not the list. This is something that needs to be tested every day, every week, every month, every year, examined by everyone, and if not, immediately to replace him. And behind him, there's a line that will fight for the revelation of good and kindness. That's interesting. People are standing in line that want to that want to do good. The ability to somehow express your power in the power of love in relation to society. Yeah, thank you very much. Spiritual states. Until next time, all the best.